What is going on all you constant viewers and listeners out there in the multiverse? Welcome back to Geek Talk with Brian Ford 16. I hope that all of you are having a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holiday wherever you're at. If you are new to Geek Talk with Brian Ford 16, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or the podcast channel platform that you are listening on. So just a bit of a short update or a short house cleaning. I was at Gambante, um, but I didn't do a live feed because I was just too sick. And I just decided to join him. Um, not too sick though, but I wasn't 100%. So I just decided to enjoy myself and have a couple eats and buy a couple things. But I did take a lot of photos. So you're going to be seeing a lot of photos. And for those of you constant viewers and listeners who don't know, Gambate is a anime convention. It's an anime con that takes place in Arizona. And I've been to many Gambates so far. I've been to one during the summer, which was in Tempe. And then I've been to this past one in Glendale. The events are re- these events are really cool. They showcase their cars. They showcase a lot of anime um, action figures. Um, so um, hopefully I'll show you some of you. I'll show that to some of you um, in the um, you know in my Instagram video or my Instagram page at Brian from Earth 16. So I actually got this from Samurai's Comics in Phoenix. It's a Demon Slayer. It shows Tanjiro, um, Inosuke. Um, Zenitsu and Nezuko. It's really, and I got also this one too. So it's a couple of things I got from the event. And, um, yeah, Rengoku and Tanjiro. Now, this is, this is actually my favorite one too. It shows, um, Tanjiro protecting his sister Nezuko. So yeah, it was a really fun event, and I, I hope to, yeah, I'm going to share some photos. Um, they should be popped up um, this weekend, hopefully. So, and, other, and also, too, in another upcoming podcast um, I'm going to have with Pat Murphy, the creator of Echoes of the Triumphant. He's going to return to the podcast and really discuss his comic, which is about, a, which is basically about people who inherit these powers. I mean, to me, it's sort of like a Echoes of the Triumphant. I can best describe it as My Hero Academia. Uh, meets maybe it's like it's like a dark version of my hero academia that's how i can best describe it maybe my hero academia probably meets i'll say maybe minority report i mean it's that's a sense suspenseful it's a really interesting and cool comic and i reviewed it many times so but I, you know we're gonna have pat murphy back on really cool dude um all the way from canada too so it's gonna be a fun one so in this episode i sp- Got the opportunity to speak to um, the crew behind the Ashes short film. It's a really interesting film too, and it centers around uh, this young man who has to deal with his inner turmoil, his inner battles, if you will. Um, and what's pro- prompting this whole inner turmoil is a, is this unseen alien entity that makes one person fight his or her own thoughts. Like their darkest thoughts can you imagine that it's sort of like like a you know like a like an invisible demon you know and it's a really interesting concept and darius del Silian, i couldn't pronounce his last name but he's a director of this movie and it's called ashes and i'm also joe arseno is his co-director and jose alvarez is the actor who plays the main character trey in this short film so i'll be speaking to I'm pretty much speaking to him in this episode. We had so much fun and a lot of laughs too, especially you see it early on in the episode as to why we just crack up. But we talked a lot about the film and what went into it and so much more. So without further ado, here's the crew of the Ashes short film. Enjoy. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Geek Talk with Brianford16. I'm your host, Brianford16, and in this episode, we're going. I'm going to be chatting with um, Darius um, Delcian, Jose Alvarez, um, and Joe Arcierno. Joe Arcierno. Arcierno, um, on their short film called um, Ashes. Um, it's a fan. It's actually a short film, and it's a real interesting thriller. Is that right? It's like a psychological sci-fi thriller. And um, yeah, pretty yeah. <laughs> yep so yeah pretty much so i um welcome aboard peeps what's going on how y'all been uh i've mm-hmm. been fabulous keeping busy um you know trying to 
move forward with uh, other projects too uh, on top of this one can't wait to see how ashes comes out but uh, i have all the faith in the world and darius so you know it's not gonna be so much suspense as far as whether or not it'll be something worth watching so yeah yeah for for me i'm also excited i've just been mostly in editing at the moment i'm basically editing the film as well so i've kind of just been focused on that and work and same with joe also preparing for the next stuff we're doing next year and and amongst those lines so trying to keep busy yeah that's uh, yeah pretty much (laughs) sir yes sir yeah not i'd say same as joe and darius just trying to keep busy um working on some new projects that will hopefully be coming out soon and just staying busy yeah same here i mean trying to stay busy and um for those of you who are watching actually i'm sorry about the um the setup i mean i'm actually developing i'm actually kind of the whole studio is kind of getting cleaned up a little under construction here so you can probably see nice Yep, because I, you know, I pretty much had to like. I usually spray for scorpions in my house. I live in Arizona, so <laughs> there's. Oh that. Jesus! Okay, never mind. I'm gonna stop with all the <laughs> all <jokes laughs> exactly sucking comments that I had. Oh Jesus! Never mind. Props to you. Yeah, so I mean, well, in, in our house, we just spray for our scorpions. You know, they're th- those little suckers like to get inside, and you know, it's just ah. Uh. But anyway, um, so yeah, um. Sounds like you guys are really busy, and um, especially with the short film, um, which I heard, like, I read some things about it, and it's it's crazy. I mean, I mean, talk about, like, messing with your psyche, messing with your darkest thoughts, and actually, I can even um, play a trailer for it, too, um, if, if you'd like. I can show the constant viewers um, what's going on with this film. Sure, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good if you can... Sure, I'm I'm good with that. (laughs) All right, let's... Dread, fear, and doubt. One's mind tortured and imagined into a physical presence. Wow. A force that cannot be seen invades the mind of those more susceptible to their own fears and insecurities they may not have come to terms with. Hi, I'm Darius Elsoyne, and I'm the writer, director, and cinematographer on the short film Ashes. In Ashes, we follow our main characters, Trey and Brandon, in 2089, as they infiltrate pockets of land known as Ash Zones, commandeered by an alien race known as Yasha. The pockets of land are filled with an ash-like substance that can affect our characters psychologically. Trey is an inexperienced and timid runner on a mission to fight back against the invisible threat as he's haunted by the loss of his sister. Ashes is meant to serve as the introduction and a stepping stone into a world of dreadfulness, insecurities, and doubts that hold us back as individuals from growing and ever-changing. This piece is meant to psychologically affect our character in a way that is frightening, creepy, and to try and reignite his willpower. How would it feel if an invisible threat was able to tap into our minds and visualize the trauma, insecurity, or doubts before our very eyes. However, Ashes also represents coming to terms within ourselves to move forward and to reignite faith and hope within humanity, but more importantly, within ourselves. To tell ourselves, as individuals, we do matter, even if we feel as if the role we have at the current moment doesn't feel as such. Nothing's ever too big or too small to take on. I have an amazing group of friends and other co-producers along with me, and I'd like to introduce you to at least two of them. One of them, Jose Alvarez, who's playing our main character, Trey, and of course, one of my best friends I've known since high school, Joe Acerno, who is also co-producing this project with me. My name is Jose Alvarez, and I'll be starring in Darius Del Sol's new film, Ashes. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Acerno. I'm one of the co-producers as well as the assistant director for the film, Ashes. The story is about a young man trying to prove himself to the world and, you know, just making his stamp on the world and showing the world that he has something to offer and showing the people around him that he can be a valuable asset. Wow. And, you know, a provider and a protector. And I definitely relate to that. But let's just say that it's very emotionally and thematically rich in very little time. To fully realize this project in this film, we're raising $5,500. 3500 goes towards production, which includes craft, transportation, paying cast and crew members, insurance, and a little aside for any surprises that may occur during production. We'll also be setting aside 500 for film festival applications and another 1000 for post-production. We want you to be a part of this project because the entire cast and crew truly believes in creating something special. And since this film is meant for you guys, and we want you to be a part of this, check out all the great incentives we have 
within the, our campaign. Even if you can't fully financially support us, you can always share the link, share the crowdfund campaign to others that might be interested. And of course, stay tuned to the Ashes Instagram page for more updates and details relating to the film. Thank you. And I do not know how to end this. I, uh, thanks. <laughs> kind of forever. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll just leave. Oh, my head. <laughs> And I know what you're laughing at. <laughs> oh, is that the end of the video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're laughing at, too. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's that was cool, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, man, I remember when Joe and I were basically putting that campaign trailer together. That was just like, that That week in general was just a rough week. And I was just like, we got to launch it on this day. And luckily I have Joe as not just a co-producer, but also a great friend of mine. And he was like, relax there. It's just, let's push it a bit later. And I was just like, all right, no problem. And, and, then, and then I remember when we were talking about just the campaign video in general, that the last part, um, you know, that mm -hmm. you were laughing and definitely Joe, we were discussing, should we take this out? And I'm like, that, that, that's just who I am. I gotta look yeah. It. <laughs> it's gotta be natural. <laughs> it, and I actually did hit my head. Like that, that I actually did hit my head. Oh really? You know, I thought that was a sound effect that you put in there, but you you admitting that I, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like quickly <laughs> rushing off, and I was like, oh man, I hit my head, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And he still directed the movie, guys. It didn't stop him. <laughs> that, from doing that's anything. that's like George Lucas, not even like that's like James Cameron status, or you know, shoot, like you know, yeah, something so, happens, you yes. just continue going, you know. Yep. Yeah that that last part, I was that was all improv. I was just like, I don't even know how to end this. Like honestly, <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, maybe I'll just keep this in. Eh, it seems pretty funny. And yeah. I showed it to family, and even they were laughing. And I was like. <laughs> all right well i mean ashes i mean it's a you know it's a really interesting like i said it's a really interesting concept about like how something can just like get inside your psyche and mm -hmm. um jose you played the character trey can you tell us a little more about like what trey is and like or who trey is and like what went into playing that role uh, um well trey trey is a young man who is is living in this alternate universe that has been overrun by um some otherworldly creatures and you know his 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 race human race is like fighting against these creatures and um you know people in this army go around uh purifying zones that have been riddled with ash ashen particles and uh you know his his role in this whole faction is like he's he's primarily an engineer and he's just a young man who um builds technology to aid aid in this resistance but uh you know his his family his sister his brother they're all you know fighters warriors they've been out in the field working and he he really wants to um you know live up to their standard and he goes out into the field and he he takes a crack at it um it was definitely like a lot of um a lot of a lot of daydreaming uh you know just trying to put myself in the position of somebody who who really wants to you know live up to something and you know, make their mark on the world and i definitely do identify with that because you know i think we all aspire to make our mark and you yeah, know, that's, that's definitely how I looked at things. Now, that's really interesting, too, because like, you know, it's almost like I mean, it's not only a hero's journey, though, but it's more like a way to, you know, it, it, it's just it's almost like a story that we can all relate to, especially the story when it comes to trying to prove ourselves to a society that seems to bog us down, you know? Like science society has a way of saying that you are a certain way or, you know, mm -hmm. because you're a certain way, you can't do this, you know, or because you are 
so and so therefore you can't do this it makes the, these assumptions when in fact you know there is um that's a fallacy you know and it's a story that's been repeated, you know, many times over since I think since the dawn of time, even. And um, I feel like Ash is kind of captures that too, where, or Trey's character also tra- captures that too. And you know, it's like I'm going to prove you wrong. You know, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to do it though, but I know somehow, some way, I'm going to prove you wrong. And that's why I like about you know films like this, you know, or stories like this too. It's just stories that kind of push the envelope stories that kind of make you question on what society throws at you because a lot of what society says is kind of bullshit you know Mm. like all these norms and everything like oh you have to do this because of the you know it's like come on like Mm -hmm. really like you got to put people in boxes like that and i think that's something that's done by people that are just you know mentally lazy you know it's the easy thing to do yeah and it's like a, it's like a way to like make people have excuses like well therefore because you know this and that said this i mean therefore it has to be true right and mm-hmm. there's some there's some kernels of truth you know i think but i think you know there are other i mean it's just having an open mind basically exactly mm-hmm. And um, is that what you were kind of going for when directing um, this movie, Darius? Is like, is that what you were trying to like? The message for the film was just the fact that, you know, that to have an open mind was that the the goal for yeah, this film. Yes, so like when I was writing this film, it was a mixture of having an open mind, understanding that you as an individual, um, even in whatever role or whoever we are even if it's not the top tier excellence version of ourselves it's still fine at the end of the day because you're still growing and i think that was one of and that was one of the goals in mind was to show that in this world is that you know the alien race are invisible so it's kind of like you're battling with yourself you're battling with your inner humanity you're battling yeah. with your insecurities and considering that i was writing this in a way of one this is going to be it's not going to be extremely expensive even though the idea sounds expensive especially you know if it turns into a series whatever but just like in general in the short it was just like how can we do a sci-fi thriller or a sci-fi film where we don't even see the aliens we have the mention of them but we don't even see them um and that was one of my goals with this was hopefully to show this person who is who thinks they're secure and within themselves only to find out because of a family incident and how that affects them as well as just you know trying to live up to other people's standards or even a standard that he puts on himself to be like I can do this and you know and I think for me especially I definitely kind of like it's it's tackled into my head quite a few times throughout my filmmaking career and even just me in general as I grew up and everything you know I love comics I love gaming and it's kind of oh, yeah. like is this acceptable is is this the norm and you know now at 25 I'm like yeah it is I'm freaking 25 and now people are getting into the stuff I love man you guys are late <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were like geeking out be- before it was even cool and then like people were like shitting on us for like being geeks and then all of a sudden everyone's doing it right now it's like you know you know, you got you still have stories of adults buying toys. I mean, shit, I still buy toys. You know, and then they were, before they were laughing like, "Oh, you, that's the little kid stuff." And it's like, yeah, but it's it's so cool though. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, maybe even if it's quote kid stuff, like, am I still doing the things that I have to be doing to support myself? Yeah, then all right, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, like shut the f up. <laughs> yeah, was, and like, yeah, this is coming from someone who's not like you know nearly as much of a comic book fan as you know you guys are. You know, I can't remember the last time I bought a toy, but at the end of the day, you know. If you're not really messing up anyone else's day, then who the hell cares? Is if even if you hold on to like you know certain things like from your childhood, right? You know, are you still doing what you have to like you know as an adult? As an adult, are you still growing mm-hmm. and moving in the right direction? Because again, you have people that out there that are very into comic books and and also aren't very into comic books that aren't doing what they have to be doing in order to moving in order to move their lives forward. So again, you know, I, I have to emphasize the fact that you know I'm not the biggest comic book fan in the world but just because someone else is that doesn't automatically make them you know 
immature or you know mm -hmm. less of a man or less of an adult somehow you're not even in the slightest and you know like like i said i i still watch anime i mean and i still you know i mean it's like i shoot I, this past like um past couple of weeks i was watching ronin kenshin and you know just one of my favorite animes basically mm -hmm. and um along with samurai champloo cowboy bebop and it was just it was awesome <laughs> You know, it's nice when you can still like it, something I've noticed more and more like there are things that you like when you're younger and you're, you're a child and you grow up and certain things still stick with you. Like I notice how like certain things just age with me and they aged well with me. And there are certain things that I watched when I was younger. I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, why did I like why did I watch as much as I did? Like, I think it was in, like, yeah. the last, like I remember when I was younger, like one thing I used to watch was like, you know, uh, what was that Thomas the Tank Engine movie? Like Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Like, that was one of the things, like, I grew up watching, like, you know, the VHS tape. Then I watched it, like, I just happened to watch it, like, a few years later, you know, my younger sister, my youngest sister was watching, and I'm like, what the hell did I ever see in this movie? Like, was I a crack at, like, you know, five years old? Like, <laughs> what was I doing watching this? But then I look at other things, like, oh, The Lion King. I've seen that movie literally a million times since I was two. I'm, tw I'm 26 years old in a couple of weeks. That movie's still a masterpiece. So it's just oh, yeah, interesting it's how just certain things... Yeah, to this day, it's still the peak of Disney animation, and in, in, in my opinion, the peak of animation in general. It aged so it's pretty well. How it was, yeah, it's aged very, very well. Very, very well. You know, there's so much about it that still works. So, you know, it's interesting just like, you know, how certain things like age with you and certain things just get left behind. Yeah, and, you know, you know, it's funny how you picked up on animation, you know, and it's just like with, you know, Pixar, you know, they've been doing a lot of crazy mm -hmm. cool stuff. I mean, there's even, you know, other films that they've done that, you know, I've never, I've never even seen. And they're really good, you know, and, you know, you got Toy Story. I mean, still going strong. Pokemon, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to, you know, Ash basically retired recently. Um, I don't yeah, know I heard news. about that. Yeah. And wait, wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, please, oh, no. hold on, hold on. Can we just tell Jose that Santa <laughs> doesn't exist anymore? No, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> because, you know, Pokemon was my shit at one point. Like, I was, <laughs> so, Jose, need a minute. Him retired? Oh, my God. <laughs> After 25 oh, years, and the, the, the kid aged pretty well. I mean, 10 years old for the last 25 years. I mean, dude, yeah, he's supposed wow, to be, like, freaking... <laughs> He's got a post to be... he got as a Pokemon trainer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I mean that kid the, man. The most, yeah. The most recent series was um was it Sun and Moon? Was it or was that that was like before, right? Or no? I'm not really sure actually. I haven't I haven't you know, I haven't watched Pokemon since like the um the Johto League or something. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. That's, that's how long that's it's been. That's a while. <laughs> that's a while. <laughs> Like, that's when there yeah, were still, like, 250 Pokemon, but now there's, like, what, how many, like, 500 or something or 600? Probably more yeah, remember, at this point. Yeah. I remember yeah. the Pokemon Stadium days from on the N64. And oh, yeah, Pokemon the Stadium. <laughs> that was the it. shit back then. That was a good game. Like, I never got so much into Pokemon when I was younger, but, like, that game I remember being a lot of fun. That was a good game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Man>. <laughs> so, speaking of Ash Ketchup, Ashes... Uh, what next about <laughs> ashes see what you did there yeah <laughs> why did i do that point thing that's such a douchey thing to do sorry <laughs> i did it too it's you know oh you did oh, okay all right i'm not alone okay <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> i have to take a group picture like that like yeah. right like the spider-man <laughs> meme but we're all pointing at each other right, like <laughs> they went to the trailer. God. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so um, so we're we're talking about the um film, more on the film with ashes and all that, and I like what Darius mentioned about the concept of aliens, like how in this film we don't really see them, but yet they're talked about. Just like even with today, like we have like so many conceptions about aliens, like they're little green dudes like Yoda, you know, or sometimes it could be like, you know, like humanoid um, monsters like you've seen in um, Predator and Alien, 
-hmm. but these aliens are just invisible they're like you know they're basically ghosts or phantoms if you will that go inside your head and it's like you know like you said you're fighting yourself i thought that was a pretty cool concept you know i think you know too like with um how we view some things like you know, just how we view i mean aliens in general it's kind of, it's kind of like that it's like a, in a way we kind of let the whole almost like the stigma of mental health in a sense i want to say you know maybe i don't know how i'm connecting these dots here though but i feel like it kind of reminds me of that where we know it's there right but then we're fighting this invisible battle oh crap we're mm -hmm. running out of time <laughs> <laughs> anyway so it's like we're fighting this invisible battle you know with our within ourselves i mean in terms of like mental health and that's why i think there's such a stigma it almost reminds me of that because there's some people who get it and there's some people who don't understand it even to this day mm -hmm. you know where you know it's an invisible battle and they're just like oh you know he's just you know you'll you'll get over it it's like no you have to address it you know at times you know whether it's insecurities with ourselves or our past you know it's an invisible battle and there's like this unknown force that's you know kind of entering in our psyche and we're just constantly in battle you know until we get to the point where we had to get we had to go through that battle in order to in order to kind of you know actually to, in order to win and to heal you know yeah, you have to embrace it you know if you don't embrace the grief you don't embrace the heartbreak the loss the anger the sadness if you don't embrace any of that stuff then you're never going to move past it then it's always just going to weigh you down you know if you mm -hmm. just put if you just push it off to the side you know if you always just push it down you know live in denial then you will be living in denial for a very long time or very long time you can go you can go through it you can face it head on and then you'll move past it quicker and then you'll be able to live a more fulfilling life you know once you do that you'll be able to live a more fulfilling life quicker as opposed to when you know you don't admit that like hey you know i'm dealing with a certain thing right now right and um would that be like basically um kind of what we see with uh trey's character um jose like when he um battles his stuff like he's gonna come to that kind of like that crossroads where he's gonna have to like kind of like embrace like his insecurities embrace like his um emotions Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I think with Trey's journey, especially at when I, I was writing it, it wasn't. It was a mixture of one. You have to like essentially tackle the issue or tackle like why you feel a certain way, why you're on the mission that you're on. Um. But also give a, a certain e emotion of just like this is claustrophobic for him. This is very isolated. Like you know, and that's something even as. Um, when I was on set that like how can I make it feel so that whatever he sees or what he's going through we're with him a good chunk of the time um, mm -hmm. and again I have to give you know Jose just a big you know applause for this because he absolutely just nailed it in a lot of ways that I was just like this is exactly almost how I envisioned it if not a bit more especially when we filmed a certain scene that I was just like oh my god god this man <laughs> um but in general like that was always the goal of just tackling that what the problem was he had or at least what the issue he had and then see how it unfolds throughout the film it's awesome and so like looks like this film um right now is on indiegogo right now um and it's uh Looks like it's actually gaining a lot of. Um, looks like you're gaining a lot of traction on this one. Um, Thirty-two percent um, towards the goal, and it's even rising. And um, what um, what can you tell us about the tiers in this um, Indiegogo campaign? Sure. Yeah. So like with the you know we already shot it. The Indiegogo campaign kind of is closed, but once some of the tiers are. You get an exclusive poster that I've been working on, and I've actually been uh, going back and forth on that poster and making sure everything is all right with it. Um, and this isn't the poster that's actually on the Instagram page. It's a whole new one because um, I wanted to be exclusive for the people that have joined in on this journey of making this film come to life. You get the poster. You get uh, the top tier, the runner experience, as we call it. You get the um, assigned poster. You get cast and crew uh commentary as we watch the final film so that should be 
hopefully available sometime next year after once editing and all of that is done. Um, and you also get social media shout outs. You get associate producer credit. Your name is in the credits um, and a private link to the actual film when it comes mm-hmm. out uh, online, as well as the lookbook uh, that I created and concept art for it. Because I do have concept art for th- some of the characters, some of the worlds, other aspect of Ashes. And um, but yeah, and that's really exciting because it's really exciting seeing all this stuff just come together. Because at the end of the day, I might have written it, I might have been director, but I could care less about that. I care more about Joe and his talents as an associate, uh, as a produ- co producer with me, Jose as the actor, Rice Powell as the actress playing Viola, Brian Collins as his superior officer, cast and crew, and even the people who donated, the fans, the community. That's always been important, and that's one of the things I wanted to... I loved about the comic book world. It was always that community aspect. You know, I love Comic-Con. It's seeing the fans, everyone, and I wanted to apply that to the film and the campaign and the social media stuff as much as I can. Um, And like I said, it's, again, Joe and Jose, they're, to me, how I see it, they're the real stars. (laughs) Right. Well, we wouldn't have much to do without you. You know, so, I mean, I, I hope that, you know, it, it's, I admire your humility, Darius, I really do. But I hope that you give yourself the pat on the back that you deserve too. Because what I've seen so far, not just with this film, but the other films that we've worked on as well, you know, you've been, especially with the last one that I directed, you were part of my brain trust too. Um, and I don't know how I would have done certain things without the people that I had, you know, surrounding me. Like, yeah, you know, we, you know, everyone around me was, you know, essential just like, you know, Jose and I, like, you know, we played a big part in everything with Ashes too, but like, you know, you're the central nervous system of this entire film. So we we literally wouldn't have any brain activity if it wasn't for you. (laughs) Definitely. Definitely. It's all about the people you surround yourself with, I guess, so. (laughs) That's what I like about it though, this the collaboration aspect of it, you know, like, especially with the comic cons and all that, where people get together. That's That's a cool thing about comic cons for me. You meet new people. When I started cosplaying this year, I mean, I've had so many people comment on my Moon Knight mask. Like, I was Mr. Knight. Um, I cosplayed yep. as him, and I was even called Stephen Grant, you know, probably because, like, I looked like the dude without the beard, you know? And, like, <laughs> it was it was cool. I was like, man, that is a freaking honor, you know? And, you know, they were commenting on my mask, how it lit up, you know? And it was just it was just cool. So that's yeah. why I Wait, you, went as, you went as Moon Knight. From, I went from as the Mr. Show? Knight, the Mr. Knight version of Moon Knight. Oh, okay. Stephen Grant. Oh, Stephen yeah. with a V. Stephen. Oh, wait, <laughs> hand. is he the one that's in the suit? This just shows you how in the, the one in the uh, suit. Yeah, there's one. In the su- gotcha. There's one in the suit. Okay. All right. That was one of the better Marvel shows. By the, far. That was. That, it that was, was one of my favorites. It's it's up there. I think it might be my favorite. Might be my favorite Marvel show. Oh yeah. It's definitely mine. <laughs> And Oscar Isaac, you know, talented actor, you know, he killed it. He really killed the role. I mean, playing both those roles, you know, Stephen Grant, (laughs) Mark Spector, then then Jake Lockley. Yep, all three. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because I remember when that show came out, or at least the talks of it, even as a comic book fan myself, I've always wanted to see Moon Knight in the MCU. And I was just like, Oscar Isaac would be a good pick. And it's weird, and then it's like they casted him. And just like when they did Black Panther, I was like, I've always wanted to see Black Panther on the big screen. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Jill this a while ago. Um, I'm not sure if I told you, Jose, but years ago, I was already familiar with Shadwick Boseman from 42 and, and some of the other films. And I told myself, if there's anyone that has to play Black Panther, and this was before they casted, I told myself and family, it has to be Shadwick. And they actually did it. And I was like, snap. This game over. He's like, over. He's he's like the over. Simpsons of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's just predicting things left and right. Yeah. <laughs> the Oracle, I'm just a man. fan. <laughs> the Oracle. Yeah, the Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> the Oracle. That's true. This man, Darius, he's the Oracle, man. He's Darius right is in. like freaking, he's like a freaking Jedi man. Like, you know, he just sees something and it happens, you know? <laughs> uh, my dad considers me more of a Sith. He's Jedi, so. <laughs> uh, all right, before we go, um, where can we all follow you on social media? Yeah, you can follow the Ashes short film itself at Ashes Short Film um, on Instagram. You can also follow Joe 
at JSA87. Well, J- also- JSA? JSA 1497. 1497. I completely messed that up. I apologize. <laughs> it's, my, it's my birthday, buddy. <laughs> oh. Happy birthday. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and you can also follow Jose at Real Jose Al- Alberto Alvarez on his Instagram. And of course, mine at Naj underscore Ede. Um, and also, Joe's production company that also had a hand in this natural multimedia on Instagram. Follow us all. We are excited to just show this hopefully sometime next year and put into festivals as well awesome man i'm looking forward to ashes and on social media yeah well you could follow the instagram page of ashes itself at ashes short film as well as you can follow me on at naj underscore n-a-j underscore e-r-e just so the spelling's right there and i'll let joe and jose share theirs so you can follow me um, at JSA1497 and you can also follow my media production company Natural Multimedia at natural underscore multimedia underscore LLC Awesome sure. and you can you can follow me at Real Jose Alberto Alvarez on Instagram and Jose the Actor on TikTok <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> you just made the TikTok. I was like, man, he has a TikTok. God damn. Dude, I got I got a couple TikTok pages. I'm not even sure if I want to share them. That's a fucking. I, I got a TikTok <laughs> page. I don't use it as much as I probably should, but <laughs> gives me an idea though. Heck, awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming on. Um, it was so cool having you on and talking about the film. I hope we have you on again, um, for any future Absolutely. projects or films and. Yeah, so um, ladies and gentlemen, constant listeners, um, if you um, look, be on the lookout for Ashes, and I'll put the Indiegogo on my YouTube link down below, so that way, and also for my Spotify link as well, so that way you can um, click on it and just support this awesome film. So thank you all for coming, and um, as I always say, um, this is Brian from Earth 16, and everyone here is all signing out. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, because I, uh, I just wanted to say, like, before we sign out, like, mm-hmm. the Indiegogo campaign, like, um, like, e- like right now, we're not, re- like, it's, you know, the campaign is closed, but in- even if it's closed, everyone can go share it, share the Instagram pages, share all of our social media, because we will definitely be posting a lot. I already posted some stuff today about the posters um, for the film, so, like I said, I am, ex- I just want to say before we hop off, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity thank you brian i appreciate this and of course Anytime, man. i appreciate joe and jose jumping on with this because this is this is great because we, we believed in the script because i remember when joe and i were early early stages of planning this film he asked and i told him about my idea and he asked me oh when do you think you'll get the script by i'm like probably probably next week <laughs> and I gave him the first draft of it and he was like all right, let's make this happen. <laughs> and we yep. just powered through months and months of planning and preparation. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you because I'm I'm excited. Like I said, I'm editing. Everyone was great. I'm I'm just like I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, me too. Me too. And uh, you know, I, I I can't follow up that Darius' reaction, but I'll do, I'll do what I can do. <laughs> But no, all all kidding aside, you know, it's much easier to be to dedicate yourself to a project when you know the man at the center of the project is just as enthusiastic, if not even more enthusiastic too. So like the passion is can very much be contagious and there's no greater example of that that I know of or at least that I've experienced in working with uh, Darius on Ashes. Like I've never seen someone who just just even just talk so much about a film, even when we're not working on anything. Like you just talk to me about it just like over and over and over again. And I'm like, we need to get this done. <laughs> we, we need to make this happen. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I just wanted to thank Darius and Joe too, just for allowing me to, you know, work on something and, you know, writing in characters that are not just, you know, one-dimensional. Writing characters that are, you know, that have a lot of layers and complexities. And, um, you know, it's always a great time with them on, on set. So. I want to thank them and thank you, Brian, for allowing yes. us a space to talk about our our film. Anytime, man. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Because I hope 
I don't know exactly like what kind of films I'll be directing myself in the future that would like fit into the, like the niche that you have here. But if there ever is any, or like you know, if you want to like span a little bit, I'd, I'd be more than happy to come back on the show just for whatever reason, any way that you know I could contribute somehow. Awesome, that'd be amazing. I would love that, man. All right, well, thank, well, thank you so much for all for um for coming on, and like I said, I hope to promote more of your film. Um, yeah, I'm going to make sure I put on my social media, the link and everything. And I hope to have you guys back on, you know, in the near future. I would love to, to my man. I would love to. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, you know, the, the trailer, man, that was, the, I got to tell you, man, that trailer is going to be the highlight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that trailer took days to edit. Oh my God. Like, yeah, you're talking time... about the announcement? Yeah. The uh, announcing the campaign, right? Like the amount of versions that, like, you know, <laughs> that Terry has sent me. He's just like, okay, what about this? Okay, I would send him this list of notes. Okay, now what about this? And I would send him some more notes, and that happened about five or six <laughs> times after that. Because, <laughs> like, like what ended me. up happening was that we were so close to about the launch, and unfortunately, we had to reshuffle some stuff around when it comes to some of the casting. And so I was like, all right. We got to get this out there because I wanted that time a good month or so, month and a couple of weeks to get hopefully get all the funding. If not, like I said, Joe and I were like, we'll still do it for however much we get. Um, but like it, it, it was for me, I kind of put myself almost on crunch time to just like try to get this out. And I realized and like Joe helped me realize that like it's not the quality that it should be. Let's launch it a couple of days later. And I was like, you know what? You calm my nerves down, no problem. And I literally just, I think, slept or whatever. And I was like, all right, I, I can look at this a bit more, a bit better and more of a critical uh, point of view. And, you know, we finally launched it. And with the new uh, reshuffle of cast that we had, and I was just like, all right, this is good. This is getting good. This is, I'm feeling good. And, uh, and we just launched it. And I was just like, thank you. God, this editing of this campaign video is done. <laughs> it took too long for me. <laughs> well, it was a cool trailer video, man. Like, I hope we see more like it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Most I likely. I have a few more scripts in the works, so, uh, we'll gotta wait and see. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, y'all have a good night, and, um, stay ever so awesome. This is Brian from Rich16, signing out.